So night two we spent a hotel. We got soaked on the trail so we decided to take a motel and this is it. Big mess, everything is dirty and time to make some breakfast and carry on for a day. Today's quick breakfast before we head out. Chicken a la Costco on pumpernickel bread and then we're gonna maybe stop somewhere to have something else to eat and coffee. So Kazlo, a zombie land, not a living soul. And what time do we have right now? Eight. Eight o'clock. Hmm? We are here. Yeah. Oh, 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 there's one person on the bus stop. And we're going in the search for a coffee. Can't ride without coffee. <laughs> yeah, no Starbucks here. Well, at least the rain gave up. <laughs> In this little coffee shop uh, down in the basement there is a mining museum with a lot of artifacts from uh, back in the days when they were digging for uh, copper and gold and uh, there's a huge collection of rocks and uh, machines uh, drills and everything like it's pretty neat a uh, little place uh, once you get down uh, you can always check that out if you're around here I really recommend it it's a fun little coffee shop and with a decent coffee and a good breakfast that's a uh better than no coffee at all, but this is really good coffee. So. Cheers guys! <laughs> Czy jedziemy jak najszybciej, żeby dojechać do Grasnie, czy jedziemy przez New Denver? Tą 31 A. So we just had a breakfast, had a nice English muffin with cheese and bacon and egg and uh, we are leaving the hotel today and uh, we will be heading towards Grasmere, British Columbia and uh, looking not any better as you see the weather is still not on our side, unfortunately it is what it is, but uh, we're gonna try to make best out of it, not too clean. And the chain probably needs a little love and tender. It's uh, pretty dry, I should have freaking lubricated, but uh, I think I'm gonna do it next stop. So we are zooming through the twisties. approaching New Denver, there we go. That was a nice run of twisties on the wet tarmac. It's still we're going over 100 k's, uh, 100 kilometers per hour on the wet curves. Again, tractionators, GPS, they perform excellent, excellent, and it's downpouring heavy. And this is a brand new set after the change. Well, it's not brand new anymore because I've done almost uh, 600 kilometers on the Moretti. Oh, I just wish that rain gave up. 
a train is driving me nuts and last time when we went through here we had rain as well and today same shit so here we have a BMW issue <laughs> Africa Twin happy, eh? <laughs> <laughs> BMW. <laughs> no, Africa Twin powered by wire attached by Tosamo. Yeah. How to fix a throttle by wire? Yeah, yeah, yeah. More twisties and more rain that is impossible to be on this road and avoid the rain I think you would have to be living here in order to enjoy the decent ride through those twisties the clouds are so low sitting over the mountains and uh, you can see a big cloud actually sitting over the lake to the right and, well you can't probably see but I can and that will be the first time where I can feel my boots getting uh, dampness in them a little bit. Just take a look at this road. It's so tempting to push it and you can't. I'm not even sure how it's supposed to do uh, another 360 kilometers in the we already did probably over a hundred so that's gonna be uh, over 400 something kilometers in uh, in the rain and the rain is just pouring it's just crazy wow that's a nice turn check this out It would be just perfect, it would be. So we are just approaching Slokan right now and we have a honey wagon in front of us. So day three of our adventure. We didn't make it too far. My buddy's BMW unfortunately broke down and the throttle control is not responding. Uh, possibly uh, something happened because of that heavy rain that we had and uh, we're gonna have to call it a day uh, at Castlegar and we are about 11 kilometers we tried to fix it we take everything apart unfortunately that didn't work uh, we cleaned uh, the whole throttle bar control uh, and uh, we had no luck with it um, so now uh, the idea is to get into the hotel and uh, we might go double up uh, tomorrow maybe uh, to Calgary and then he's gonna pick uh, get his truck and come back uh, that's we are about uh, 630 kilometers from home unfortunately that's uh, adventure and not much you can do and the weather itself it's not helping at all so we are basically cruising at 70 kilometers per hour because uh, he's got no power it's work the throttle is working but uh, there's no power on it you can't go faster that's what it is every trip is something this is so nice a uh, big dam i wish and we can't even do nothing we are getting into castle gar I worked here for a couple of weeks in this town. At this point, I'm soaked. First time, I'm soaked to the bone. Even my boots, they never got wet. And this is the first time I, my boots got wet. our motel in Castlegar and this is where we're gonna leave uh, the BMW and Robert is gonna come back tomorrow with his truck to pick it up uh, we don't have much of a choice uh, there's not much of the services available nearby so that would be the only way to get back home to Calgary 
uh, it's gonna be two up and uh, quite a few kilometers in front of us and Robert is gonna take care of his bike tomorrow once he returns here and brings it back home and order new parts for the throttle control So day four, enjoying breakfast at a and w and finally sun and dry weather. So returning home as a double up, we just had a breakfast at uh, A&W and leaving the beautiful Castle Gar, just check out the views here, it's just amazing. We have uh, almost 600 kilometers to go, double up and Robert has to come back tomorrow to pick up his truck uh, and uh, get the bike on the back of the truck to bring it back to Calgary. <laughs> so that was a real adventure, shed a lot of rain, breakdown, ah, we just talked to some people, there's a chance we might get some snow around Fernier area <laughs> that would be even more fun <laughs> what's next two guys with the load you have to gear down going up the hill a little bit we have to drop one gear <laughs> It's a little bit heavy for two up, but it goes like a snot. Climbing that big ass hill. Wow, look at those views, it's just amazing. I took my wife uh, in the back before, but never with another guy. Wow, the temperature is dropping to 6 degrees. It is on the cooler side now. Coming down, I guess, at this point, because the temperature is climbing back up a little bit. It was plus 6 uh, on top of that uh, mountain, and now we're going down. It's uh, plus nine so three degrees difference within literally just a few minutes and a good thing we didn't stay on top too long there uh, next stop we're gonna pull over and uh, we have to get some gas change the gopro battery if that sun would come out that would be much nicer but it's still better than it was yesterday yesterday was just disgusting oh, two days of solid rain especially when you get at least a bit of pieces of the blue sky and we got 29 kilometers to Creston in Creston and that's where we're gonna pull off Preston's fruit market Pumpkins just ready for Halloween Apples 
freshly picked ooh those are good no oh you know what I want I want a peach mają czy nie mają tu są No, tutaj na drogę. Tu jedną zjemy. Ok. To chyba starczy nam to. Ile ty wiesz? Za dwie. And you picked up raw honey made of what? Wildflower blend. Good one. A dlaczego ona to trzyma zamiast położyć? Oh, get, get two of those and put in one separately. Yeah, because you're not gonna crush it this way, and the, the other one separate, well, and squeeze it around. Yes, yeah, just squeeze it. Yeah, there you go. On the motorcycle, it's not the safest way to transport things. <laughs> Passing here Moya Lake, and there's also Moya Town. There's a lot of cottages on this lake here, and the guy that's riding with me today, he comes here camping sometimes. It's a beautiful lake and a beautiful area, it's surrounded by mountains. We left Moya Lake and heading towards Cranbrook. 16 kilometers to Cranbrook. And then we're heading to Fernie. A lot of logging industry here again. So one thing I discovered now from my buddy that uh, if you have a top box and I would recommend if you're riding a lot of uh, two up, install the padding on the top box because otherwise it's uh, vibrating and beating on your back. Or second option would be to use the soft luggage. So the probably while it was raining where we were, most likely they had a snow here. But in the mountains, not here. Oh. Welcome to Cranbrook. It looks like we have a rain in front of us. At least it's not raining all day like it was yesterday and day before. Still a 
enjoying the Canadian beauty full time. And we are pretty close to the tunnel in the mountain. It's a pretty short one. So just another highlight from uh, riding two up. Uh, it's okay to do it, but uh, you have to do more stops along the way. Probably every 80 kilometers or so. Good idea to give a rest and stretch it out. Because the riding position uh, for the long term riding it's not the most comfortable because you're sitting kind of a little bit forward. Maybe it would be different when I have my wife. It is different when I have my wife because feel kind of more normal having a woman behind you than riding with the guy. Dumb and dumber style. Oh yeah, baby. <laughs> okay, there we go. We're gonna approach the tunnel. So we just passed Elko and we will be approaching Fernie pretty soon. Still enjoying the Canadian beauty. Oh, the closer we get to Calgary, the more yellow it is. The fall is a little bit few steps ahead. It's way warmer down south and southwest, I should say. Check out those mountain peaks in front of us. A lot of snow on them. I wonder how much longer we got before we got the actual snow and it's gonna be done. The Africa Queen is gonna get serviced over the winter. A couple things I'm gonna have to do. I want to take all the switches apart, clean them up, put a dialytic grease, uh, clean the filters, do a valve adjustment. So I'm gonna have to do that. I'm not sure if I'm gonna film that because uh, it's gonna be my fir first attempt to do that. I don't know, we'll see. I'll still make the des decision on that. Uh, it would be good, nice to have the video how to do the valves on the Africa Twin. But uh, every time I make a video, it takes me three times as long as it's supposed to take. Because you have to move the camera and this and that. Of course, oil change is gonna have to get done and uh, uh, flush the brakes uh, fluid. I'm gonna do that actually first, uh, flushing the brakes, and I will make the video of, of that as well because that's a simple process, it's not too, too hard to do. I'm not sure if I was able to find one uh, on YouTube, but I've done brakes before on multiple occasions from changing the pads to flashing the system, nothing to it. I'll do the radiator flash as well. I'm at 28,000 kilometers, so I'll hit over 30,000 by the end of uh, this fall. That's that 2017 Africa Twin is treating me well, and I have to treat her well. So as I'm approaching Fernie, it's gonna be time to end that video because I already covered uh, that section of the road on my last trip uh, when I went uh, home from British Columbia. So thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like the video if you enjoyed it in any way. And uh, go through my other footage on my channel. Subscribe, comment below and support the channel. Uh, that always means the most to me. Till next time, cheers. And this is how nasty she looks after this adventure. She was in a lot of mud, heavy rain, dirt, and she's gonna have to get a good wash and also uh, maintain the items that I described earlier. 
Uh, she's due for that brake uh, fluid replacement and a radiator coolant replacement as well.